Well, in my research, I use a lot of what we call geographic information systems technology, which uh, GIS, which is using information about the geographic area to better understand why it is that people engage in the behaviors that they engage in uh, and some of the influences on uh, cancer and cancer-related risk behaviors. Um, so the, the sort of the first step is to bring in our, our participant data and then to sort, sort of, you know, we often will sit around as a team and, and say, okay, so we have this um, this data on our, our, our participants or our patients. Now, what are the things that we think might be relating to um, discrepancies in this population? And then so we would start to sort of brainstorm about either available data sources that are out there, maybe it's census data, and bringing that into a, a, data, a geo database to then start to do some analysis. One of the things that we're interested in, in better understanding is how, how do different aspects of the environment influence people's behavior? So, for example, if you're a person that lives in an area that has a high density of fast food restaurants, there's a couple on the way in and out of your neighborhood, uh, and there's uh, quite a few along your commute to work. We want to know what kind of influence exposure to that number of fast food restaurants might have on your dietary behavior and ultimately your um, risk of uh, overweight and obesity, which we know is causally related to can many, a number of different cancers. So that would be one example of some of the things that we would look at in the environment. There are just so many things that play into people's behaviors and people's risk for cancer. And it goes beyond what you do or don't do as an individual. And there is an influence of the area on what people do. Where you live uh, influences your stress, uh, your likelihood of, of uh, purchasing certain products that may put you at risk of cancer. And we need to know more about the multi-level determinants of behavior in order to better understand how to intervene with folks. We can't change where people live, but the more we understand about how where people live affects their behavior, the more we can um, tell people that, make them aware of these things, the more we can influence policy to have a change on some of these things that put certain groups of people at particular risk for cancer. Um, and so in some of our research, um, we're kind of interested at tract level data, and most of this is, is derived from, from the U.S. Census, um, but we also are taking things a little further and we want to look at, uh, in, in one of our research projects, we looked at um, tobacco retail outlet density so, uh, and proximity. So we took a, neighbor, uh, a neighborhood or, or an individual address and we wanted to see um, whether or not if you're really close to a tobacco retail outlet or there's a, a high density of tobacco retail outlets around you, whether or not it affected um, your um, smoking cessation at, at different points in time. And so over here, um, if we were to, this is essentially overlaid on this is the density of tobacco retail outlets. And so you could imagine the, the, the lighter um, yellow um, is sort of the highest density all the way to the blue is, is very low density. Um, and we used some, some spatial statistics to sort of derive um, levels of, of density, but essentially um, we're curious to see if, if somebody lives in a, an area here versus an area here versus sort of a, a pink area, how might that influence their um, rates of smoking cessation after an intervention um, at, at MD Anderson?